in the Torah army. Or let's say he spoke between Yishtabach and Baruch also between two parts of the prayer, not even in the middle of the prayer, but between two different chapters of the liturgy. It's enough of a sin that he should go back and not be in the war. There's a famous story that they told over, I believe it was to Rebbe Chanan Wasserman, I could be wrong, maybe it might have been the Briskarov, I'm not sure. They told over a story that uh, the Bacham Yeshiva said that the Maskilim, the the secularists, they made a, 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 a play, a Yiddish play, making fun of the Torah, making fun of passages in the Torah. So one of the things they, they made fun of was this portion. That it says, whoever's afraid, and the sages say, whoever's afraid of, the, of their sins, they should go home. So like all these people, they were all ready to go fight. You know, who was left? Chavetz Chaim, Arab Chaim Oizer, to the big tzaddik and two of the big tzaddikim from Lithuania, Poland. And everyone had a good laugh that these old rabbis, they're going to be the ones who are going to go fight. But the wise rabbi who heard the story said, they don't know the end of the story. They would have won. These holy Hasmoneans, the Maccabees, these weren't big muscle guys, these weren't some Hercules guys like you see in the movies. These were little yeshiva guys these were people who had no military training. These were people, it says, you gave the, the strong into the hand of the weak. They were weak people who sat and learned Torah all day. They were priests in the temple, Kohanim. That's all. And yet, it was a miracle. They went out and defeated the Hellenists. Why? So the Rebbe explains, <laughs> He says, anyone who went out to war had to be totally clean of any sin in order not to put the Israelite nation into danger. That's the point. And they can't even go and say, well, I'm going to go and die for my sin because I want to receive atonement because they're putting everyone else in danger. So they're not allowed to put the army in danger, so it's better they should go home. Any, all of us. None of us are worthy to be in that holy army that would go out and fight, the army that would take out the Ark of God in the older days when they had the Ark available. And they would fight and win wars in a supernatural way. Not only that, we see openly in the Bible, we don't have to explain it from a passage in the Talmud that explains the Bible to say someone who's afraid that it means he's afraid of sins. Openly, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 33, that when you go out for a war against your enemies, your camp should be holy. And they should not see any unseemly or, or improper thing and cause the Spirit of God to go back away from you. I mean, when you're fighting a war, none of us will be worthy. And certainly not in the way that they fight wars today, that they're putting people, you know, they, they give people all the schmutz, all the garbage, and that's how they go out and fight a war. It's one, and they say it's a morale booster. That's not the way that the Torah prescribes for us to go to war. So it's better not to go to war. We're not worthy to have an army today, the Jewish people, because we live in a different way. We live in a totally different framework than the other nations of the world. And so the way that we exist as a nation is totally supernatural. It's beyond any, any way that anyone could imagine. We know the famous story that the Emperor Franz Ferdinand of Austria-Hungary asked his advisors, give me a proof God exists. And they said, your majesty, the Jews, because the very existence of our people is totally beyond anything that could be described as naturally. By all rights, we shouldn't exist. We only exist because of what's truly right, because of what's truly true, because of the word of Almighty God, because of God, He's protecting us, He's fighting for us. And so we don't need to go and, and, and have all this nonsense to armies and wars. That's for everyone else, and it's good for them, and it's fine for them, they should be well. We don't want there should be war in the world, we, should, we want there should only be peace. But that, if that's the way that's the way they exist, they exist in a different way. But we exist with a direct connection to God, without any intermediary. 
And so, but the thing is, is that when you have that close relationship, it has to be with holiness and purity. Therefore, the sages didn't listen to the Bariyonim. And they didn't agree to fight with them. Even though it's, it didn't seem to make sense, if you want to talk about logic, you want to talk about reason, you want to talk about what most people's opinions would be, oh, you should go out and fight, oh, you should go out and defeat the Romans, why are these rabbis putting us in danger, this and that. And they said the same thing, you know, b before the big war. They said, oh, the rabbis are putting us in danger because we should go and build... And they even blamed the rabbis afterwards. But if they wouldn't listen to the rabbis, there wouldn't have been any problems, because we see what happened after all the terrorism and everything the Zionists made. The British made the white papers and closed down the Holy Land and wouldn't let Jews go there. If they wouldn't listen to the rabbis and been humble, probably all the six million Jews who died in the Holocaust could have gone to the Holy Land if it wasn't through the Zionist way, if it was through the humble way that the sages wanted. And the Rebbe says, due to our abundant sins at this present time, this plague has gone out of heresy throughout most of the world, throughout most of the Jewish world. And people think that through wars and through physical human actions, and through just regular base deeds through the world, that's how we can receive, that's how we can cause to sprout the redemption of Yisrael, of the Jewish people. They don't think, I mean, even talking about religious people, people who claim, people who observe the Torah and claim to believe in God, but their belief is somehow it's, uh, they, they think God is weak, they don't, they don't realize, first of all, that the sages tell us that we're bound by an oath, with a very severe oath, made to swear, with a very severe uh, punishment, as it says in the Gemara and the Talmud, Kufi the Aleph, 111, that we're not allowed to take a redemption and free ourselves before at the time that God desires to redeem us. And this is what it says already in the Bible. It says, I'm making you swear, O daughters of Jerusalem. It says in the Song of Songs a few times, by the, by the deer and by the antelope of the field, do not awaken, do not arouse the love until I desire. So the sages say, what does this mean? It means this, we're supposed to wait patiently for the Messiah and not take it by ourselves. And if we do, it puts the Jewish people in tremendous danger and causes tremendous bloodshed, as we've seen over the past hundred years since this heresy has spread among our people, unfortunately. And people are so foolish to think that the salvation of the Jewish people, or even the beginning of the salvation, could come through wicked people? God forbid, what kind of thing? Through people who don't believe in God, don't believe in the Torah? These are the people who are going to bring the redemption? That's totally heretical, the Rebbe says. It's das minus, and anyone who thinks this, even he, he has a doubt about this. The Rebbe says, the Satmar Rav says, that he is trapped, also in the trap of heresy. May God have mercy on us and save us. How could a person not be embarrassed to read Kriyishma twice a day? I remember myself when I was first starting to learn more about Yiddishkeit, and I didn't have tzitzis yet. And I was saying Kriya Shema every day, and I was so embarrassed I didn't have tzitzis, because says tzitzis. The Rebbe says, uh, that's me personally I'm saying, the Rebbe says here, how could a person not be embarrassed to say Kriya Shema if he agrees with, with these heretical ideas that not only are, are heresy, but put our people into tremendous danger and caused, unfortunately, so many holy brothers and sisters of ours to die in wars and terrorism, all kinds of things to have gone on since the time that Herzl started this heresy. Uh, not he started it, but he really 